Good morning, folks. We've got some interesting articles today, but even with quiet space weather, there is news on our star. So as you see a filament rip away top right, let's go over to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star work calm, but for the Earth-facing heliographic longitudes going from blank to populated. Bottom left, dark patch makes two coronal holes, turning in with the other about a day ahead and on the north. The populated longitudes are not populated with sunspots as we're at the cycle minimum right now and for the next few years those are just slightly more magnetic areas of the surface. But the eruptive potential is real due to the plasma filament snaking around the corona and which can erupt at any time, in theory. That has many concerned about the C-shaped filament on the south and it is somewhat of a concern these filaments do not remain stable for long. But watch the northern part of the C-shaped filament. You should see lighter colored arches doing their cow jumps over the moon impression. Those bright loops are a stability factor, and while they could fade away today in a matter of hours, as of this morning, they have the big dog strapped in tight. We'll have eyes on it today. Solar wind continues its downtrend between streams after the peak on the 21st in minor storm conditions. Geomagnetism is very calm now as well, as you can see where we came out of the storm on the left. Two coronal holes incoming, as we said, northern one, about a day ahead. Their solar wind is still a few days away, but we expect a lithospheric uptick before then, and which could begin at any time. Worth noting that lots of blood echo activity in South America has gone unanswered at higher magnitude for a number of weeks. Before we get into our top stories, let's peek in on this meteor seen over Japan two nights ago. Quick trivia, who can remember what composition of rock produces the green flash we see with falling fireballs? A nice one-two punch from yesterday's subsurface Ice on Mars article. This one takes a look at the polar regions, which we know are capped with frozen CO2, but which apparently have similar abilities to act as a water reservoir on the red planet. Up next, we shift to two Carnegie Institute terrestrial magnetism scientists doing their own version of where are we going. They convincingly tie the core, mantle, and atmospheric dynamics together in a very lengthy but happily well-communicated work that actually had me double-taking one of their last graphics, thinking I'd been staring at my computer too long. Under this coupling model of the whole planet, when we lose our planet's magnetic field, it eventually leads not to a Mars-like planet, but a Venus-like planet, at least first. Not exactly something that is readily in the minds of most observers, even if the magnetic reversal of Earth surely is. We've got the wind maps and shots of our star to close. For those celebrating today, I'd only hope to envision a pleasant time with those for whom you care, tempered softly in your mind with the memory of the genocide it took to get here. But waste not a moment to produce positivity in the aftermath, especially if you are with those you love. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.